Hello world, welcome back to the Vanguard Cycles YouTube channel. My name's Greg. We've got something a little bit interesting for you today. It's a brake bleeding procedure and service with the giant MPH brakes. Now, they've been around for quite a long time. They don't really support them anymore, but there's still a really high amount of sets of these brakes out in the wild and very little information about how to bleed them and how to fix them and adjust them. So stay tuned and we're gonna go through that process from top to toe. As ever, if you have any comments or you'd like to discuss anything about the video, please make a comment down below. Also, if there's anything you'd like to see in upcoming videos, get down there and let me know. Right, let's get into it. Right, so you want to bleed your giant MPH brakes. What do you need? Now, first thing you're going to need is some brake fluid. These brakes are compatible with DOT 5.1 or DOT 4 fluid. Do not, do not, do not use mineral oil in these brakes. And conversely, if you're servicing mineral oil brakes, never put DOT fluid in them. That goes as far as to say, if you have a bleed kit for mineral oil, don't use it for DOT fluid and vice versa. Fluids wise, we've also got some water for washing off any residue, some isopropyl alcohol if we need it for some deep cleaning, gloves, PPE, very important. Okay, three, four and five mil hex keys. We've got a bleed block here to go in between the pistons. A rubber band might be useful, We've got a nice plastic tire lever in case we need to push the pistons out. A 10 millimeter Allen key, that's for the caliper bleed port. We've got a little receptacle here for good clean fluid. And we've got a receptacle here that we know is gonna be for dirty fluid. We've got our syringe for DOT fluid. I happen to use SRAM ones. And this is my little bleeding device I've cooked up for the caliper bleed. It's a bottle from very nice probiotic drink that's good for your tummy a little bit of silicon tube and a cable tie there on the end to stop the tube coming out and that will just connect onto the caliper bleed end in case we need to get any fluid out and any air and last thing here some nice blue shop towel so we're going to take a closer look here at the giant mph system this is a front brake and i've taken it off the bike so it's easier to show you here we've got the lever mechanism which is the same really as any hydraulic brake squeeze the lever here that's going to push fluid from the reservoir down the hose all the way into the caliper okay and then you can see we've got brake pads in here and the pistons will squeeze together and that's how the brake will function the one quirk about these fellas is that on the lever end on the master cylinder there is this rotating adjustment knob, okay? And it can get pretty tight, to be honest. Servicing it completely is probably the subject of another video, but what this does is push a little plunger in and out of the master cylinder to take up space in there. And in effect, it pushes the pistons closer together and further apart. When you bleed this brake and when you set it up, you need to be able to use this to adjust the pistons for bleeding and to get the bite point correct and to eliminate any rub. So first of all, before you do anything to service these brakes, make sure that this is working properly. Okay, down the other end, we've got the caliper, which is pretty standard. Thing to note here that we're gonna use for the bleeding procedure is we've got a rubber cover and a bleed port and this takes a 10 millimeter Allen key. So when we do the first stage of the bleed, which is to flush all the fluid through, we will need to open and close this with our 10 millimeter hex wrench. With these brakes, it's a two stage process for the bleed. Now giants say that if you're confident that all you're doing is getting a little bit of air out of the system, you can skip to the lever only part of the bleed process. And I'll link that down below. This bike's come in and I have no idea how old the fluid is. DOT fluid should be really changed every one or two years. I personally say every six to 12 months anyway. So we're gonna go ahead with the full caliper bleed and then the lever bleed. And in fact, we'll replace the fluid completely. And you'll see that as part of the video. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the pads from the caliper. Never bleed your brakes with pads in. If you get brake fluid on them, they're ruined and you just have to throw them away. So that's bad news. So what we've got here is a three millimeter Allen bolt that keeps the pads in. Don't confuse it with this bolt or this bolt. These hold the caliper together, don't touch them. It's just this one here. So we're gonna unscrew this. 
Okay, take that out of the way. That should give us access to remove the pads and they don't have an anti-rattle spring. They are just in there magnetically. So you should be able to just pull them out one at a time wearing clean gloves. Okay. They look like this. And just put them somewhere safe. Okay, so we've got a couple of jobs to do here on the lever side of things. First of all, let's take a four millimeter Allen and just loosen off the clamp bolt because we want to rotate the lever so that the bleed port screw is at the very top there of the master cylinder. Okay, that's great. Next thing we need to do is completely back off this screw to the left anti-clockwise. So you can see that's turned back all the way. Now don't take it really, really, really tight because you can actually jam the internals, but you'll feel a stop there and that's all you need to do. Okay, now we're gonna set up our syringe, take our DOT fluid. I like to pour some of this into a good clean receptacle. So we're not gonna contaminate the DOT. We also use small bottles here. Once the DOT fluid is open to the air, it will start drawing in moisture. So if you're bleeding your brakes, if you can buy the smallest bottles of DOT fluid possible, that's always the best bet. Take your syringe. Okay, this one's nice and clean from previous use. We're going to draw it in to about three quarters full. All right. And then pinch the clip. Okay. And now, we want to pull back to see if there's any extra gas or air in there and we can degas that fluid, okay? Now this is behaving pretty well because it's a new bottle, but sometimes you'll find you'll get microscopic bubbles coming out of there. Now you notice we've got some air at the top of the syringe here. We need to get rid of that. So unclip, take a clean bit of towel, and push that syringe up. Make sure that all the bubbles are gone, including the one at the very top. Okay. Once they're all out, we can reclip the syringe. So now we're up at the lever end and we need to open the bleed port and connect our syringe. So you notice I've got a little bit of paper towel around here just in case it leaks. It may well weep a bit if it's under pressure, especially if this fluid is old. There we go, we've just cracked that off. Be very careful. Especially if this fluid is old and it's expanded because of contamination. And we can see there, it's just started to cry a little bit. Now don't worry too much. Wipe as you go. The main thing is so when you're finished, to have a really good clean up. Okay, then we're gonna take our syringe and very gently thread that on. Now, you, what you don't want to do is cross thread your master cylinder. So if you feel resistance there, or it's difficult to thread in, stop, back it out, and make sure that you're using the correct threaded bit, especially if you've got a multi-bleed kit. Okay, so that's on now. We'll leave the clip closed. So we're down at the caliper end here. We're going to take off our rubber cover pop that somewhere safe. And now we can take our little bleed bottle with the silicon tube and push that on to this bleed port, making sure that you get it past both little lumps on there. Okay, so it's nice and secure. So when we bleed out the old fluid and the air, that'll drain down into there nicely and it's not gonna go anywhere. And this is where we would need our 10 millimeter wrench, okay? So the bleed process will go like this. We'll undo the bleed port a quarter or an eighth of a turn. You don't wanna undo it very much, otherwise you'll get rid of all your fluid really quickly and you might introduce air into the system, which you don't want. That's using our 10 mil wrench. 
Up at the lever, we will unclip the clip on our syringe and start pushing the plunger to introduce fresh fluid into the system, okay? Now, the manual states that until you close off the bleed port of the caliper again to stop the system being open, you need to keep pushing down on this, okay? So that's really important. When you start pushing down on the plunger, keep pushing it until you close up the bleed port. So I hope you can see this clearly enough. I've got my 10 mil wrench on the caliper and I've got my syringe ready to go. I'm gonna undo the clip on my syringe. Very gently push down on the plunger on my syringe and just let off the bleed port, tiny amount. Okay, it was a bit stiff. Now you should be able to see some fluid coming out there. Uh, pretty nasty as well. Now the bleed manual tells you to squeeze the brake lever quickly and then let it go very slowly. But I know that because of the volume of fluid in here, I pretty much want to empty this syringe and then we'll refill it to do the second part of the process. So what I'm really doing here is pushing the old dirty fluid out. Okay, now as I come to the end of the syringe, I'm gonna get ready to tighten up my port because what you don't wanna do is run out of fluid and then introduce air into the system. Okay, so I've now tightened that up and I've still got some fluid left in the syringe. So that's step one done. The caliper bleed port is just tight enough we can clip our syringe, take a fresh towel and unscrew it from the top there. And now we know we've got completely fresh, brand new brake fluid in the system and we can continue to step number two. I'll just quickly show you here that we're gonna remove this little receptacle with the old fluid just be careful, you don't want it to go everywhere. You don't want it to spill. We'll just pinch it off of there, okay? Now, that fluid is toxic. Please don't throw it down the drain or anything like that. Make sure you take it to your local recycling center where they should have somewhere you can dispose of DOT fluid safely. And at the end of this process, we will also clean up the area around here with water or isopropyl alcohol to make sure that there's no brake fluid where it shouldn't be. Especially remember, we don't want brake fluid anywhere near our pads. Okay, so this is part two of the bleed process. I've got a syringe here with about 50% full of fresh DOT fluid, which I've degassed and taken out any air from. I've got it installed into our master cylinder at the top. And note that there's nothing going on now at the caliper. The caliper's closed, it will remain closed. We're just doing work here at the lever end. You make sure that the adjustment knob here is anti-clockwise all the way. So that's lefty loosey all of the way. We can unclip here. And what we're gonna do is squeeze the brake lever quickly and let it go very, very gently to see if any bubbles of air come out into the syringe. And we're not gonna push the syringe at all at this point. Okay. And they basically say you can repeat this process several times. Now, because we've done a full flush, I don't anticipate there being any fluid in here that's got bubbles of air in it or anything like that. So I think it's just gonna be brake fluid and no air, but it's worth doing the job properly, okay? Next thing they say is that you can go around and if you're able to, adjust this all the way in. It may take 10 full turns to go all the way around, all the way around, just for the brevity of the video, I'm not gonna do that, but you can take that all the way in and repeat the process, okay? Just to make sure that there's absolutely no air in the system, okay? And now let's back it out again, all the way. This one is a little bit stiff, but it's still working as it should. Okay, and we've backed it out of the way again. And we're gonna do a, a quick and then a slow, and then a quick and then a slow. So that looks good to me. 
There's nothing at all coming out air bubbles wise. Let's clip the syringe, okay? And we can unscrew that. Okay. Now, when you're normally bleeding brakes, at this point, the system should be full and you would have a nice meniscus of fluid here. With this adjustable system, that doesn't happen. So what giants say you need to do is actually screw in the adjuster clockwise a little bit, just so that fluid starts to come up, okay? And once the fluid starts to come up, that's when you can replace your bleed port screw and the rubber o-ring. So we've got fluid over the top now, so we know the system is absolutely full and that there's no air in there either. So we can replace this. And as you can see, we've got a nice little bit of fluid that's just gonna leach out because we know that the system's completely full. Okay. Recommended here is five Newton meters. And we will clean all this down after to make sure there's no fluid because it's quite corrosive. And what you don't wanna do is bleed your brakes and then have brake fluid all over them so they rot away. Okay, so now we've cleaned everything up with some isopropyl alcohol and we've just centered the caliper onto the rotor. The lever is nice and hard, but we've got a little bit of rub here because we've screwed in the bite point adjuster a little bit too far. If you can hear this, just hear that rubbing. So now I'm gonna back off anti-clockwise the bite point adjuster. So now we've got no rub. Just a nice sharp break. Okay, well that's it for me today. That's the giant MPH brakes, bled, fresh fluid, working beautifully. Don't forget to go over everything and check your torque settings. For example, on your levers, make sure the angles are set up how you want them. Make sure that you dispose of any fluid correctly. Recycle it if you can, take it to a proper waste disposal place. Clean up with isopropyl. If you're working in a small space, you might wanna wear a respirator to do that or a face mask and be careful to get not get that on your skin as well. I hope you liked this video and you found it informative. If you've got any questions or comments, please get down in the section below and also, this channel, I wanna make sure we're making videos that you guys can use in your everyday bike maintenance. So if there's anything you'd like to see, or if you've got any questions about what we've done today, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, see you next time.